so um, hosted on your um, on the office, especially with the um, Daryl character. Mm -hmm. uh, in comedy, that we've always used, um, I guess, s stereotypes, uh, stereotypes. But a lot of times, we um, the the comedy is used to attack the stereotypes also. So that's always been a big, you know, big thing in, in comedy. Here, here, you know, you have like Daryl the intimidated black guy, <laughs> black guy, um, which you guys use very effectively. Here. Do you guys? Do you um, ever think it's getting old or shy away? Would shy away from that? I, I don't think so. I mean, um, I or not just even with the Daryl character, just just in general with the, with the show. I don't. Well, we're 170 episodes in, so um, there are 160 something episodes in. So you draw on everything that you can when you're trying to create funny stories, and a lot of them are, you know, stories from our lives <laughs> as we, <laughs> you know, come into the writers' room on a Monday. It's like this is what happened to me over the weekend. So um, I. If I feel the best way to write for uh, Daryl or any of the other character is to make sure that it's a true story and it comes from a real place as opposed to creating a very special episode about Daryl being black. It's just, it, <laughs> <laughs> it just happens that, you know, he's a black person in the office and things are said and things happen and, you know, just like any other character in the office. So I don't, I don't think we... Uh, or beating a dead horse by any means. Um, and also, it's great on a show like The Office that has a very wide audience to be able to tell all sorts of stories and not shy away from any story, uh, uh, as opposed to just having you know shows about black characters on black shows. So I, you know, I think it's great. Well, okay, uh, yeah, I, I guess going back to the just having black characters on the black shows. Uh, because you did the, the Sister, Sister, and you, there were a couple other shows I, also. I, I wrote, my first show was Sister, Sister, uh, then I wrote for the Chris Rock show in New York, then I also wrote for the show All of Us, uh, which was produced by Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith, and the show Second Time Around on UPN, so I've written for a number of African American shows. Uh, so uh, how would you describe, I guess, the, the experience in the writing room? From <laughs> from um, working on the office and those shows, or and also what's what was the basically the racial makeup in the in the, I guess the room you're in now, but also in the rooms you were in before the uh, right the two um, shows. Uh, sister, sister uh, was I think all the writers were black except for the showrunner uh, when I was there, and there were probably ten writers on Sister, Sister. Um, all of us was probably uh, half black, half white. Second time around, I don't, gosh, maybe like 12 writers, probably three white writers and nine um, black writers. And then on The Office, we have 15 writers. Uh, I'm the only African American, but then we have um, an Indian writer, Mindy Kaling, and then Danny Chun uh, is Korean American, and he's our head writer, or not the showrunner, but our head writer. Uh, okay. Do do you uh, uh, when it comes to doing the racial joke? Is that do we think the atmosphere is a little bit different from your previous experience as opposed to now? Uh, I don't think it, the atmosphere is different. Uh, the um, the office is a show that you know has a well. We no longer have Michael Scott, but you know, when, in past seasons we had Michael Scott at the center, who's not very politically correct and. Um, I would say The Office is a more slice of life as opposed to situational, whereas uh, other shows w might be more premise driven than The Office. Uh, and we have, another reason I think The Office is so successful is that we have 17 regulars on our show. So um, on other shows that I've written on where we have a cast of six, or five or six, you constantly have guests coming in and um, it's sort of like someone's you know, mom's coming today, you'd knock on the door and, you know, the episode is off and it's dealing with the issue that mom has that day. But on The Office, since we have 17 people, you can do all sorts of different combinations. And, you know, we saw a Andy Darrell story up there, we saw a Dwight Darrell story. Um, and I think that by not having as much guest cast as other shows, the audience gets to know all of the characters, and we have a very deep bench and really talented actors. So, um, 
that that's probably one of the biggest differences in writing for the office versus the other shows it's just we have a very deep bench um, figuring out the different combinations as far as um, on the black shows, I don't think we ever told a black story. You know, there were the stories th which had black characters, and it's the same on uh, on the Office. We, you know, there's never been a Kwanzaa Christmas or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> what was the? I, I, I can't stop. Get, I can't get this out of my head. You said the sister, sister. There was the entire writing staff was black except for the showrunner. What was the showrunner? <laughs> Uh, uh, he was white. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Awkward on all sides. Awkward. Every morning, reporting to work, awkward. Awkward with my Danish. Awkward. Uh, I, I wouldn't take any of those jobs. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be the white guy. I wouldn't be. Any, that's. Uh, what did he walk he, in and he really go? How's hired, it going? Yeah, he should have hired one token white guy. You know. <laughs> like, exactly. One make guy. Him feel better. Like weirdly. a Jim Carrey sitting in the corner of the room, going. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. Just. Like, I couldn't get it out of my head. Yeah, well, it, it, it was my first job. It was, it was <laughs> no, what it was. And, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't have taken the job. I wasn't going to walk up saying. to Garth and say, what's going on? I'm a staff writer. I got a lot to say right now. So no, I don't think there's any heroes or villains in the story. I'm just saying, like, what a horrible, awkward situation for society to create for anybody. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, also, also, you do remember that year you were on the show. In the second half of the year, there was one white guy that joined us. Yes, we, we did have another white writer join who had a black uh, partner, a black writing partner. So, yeah, so. Well, it's good. It's great, great. Much good. better, much better. Yeah. Uh, d less awkward for the white guy that has to come in every day. He's like, how's it going, everybody? Did you come up with any ideas for me <laughs> on my black people show? <laughs> Figure it out. I just I'm just saying. Our, our, our showrunner was from um, Mama's family, so he was in the whole Carol Burnett world. Um, his his claim to fame: the first thing he wrote was the Carol Burnett uh, "Gone with the Wind" sketch, where she wears the curtains. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was he had he had a lot of experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had, uh, comedy, yeah. Blurs those lines. Just picturing walking into the office every day. <laughs> Did you do my work for me? <laughs> Just feels wrong. Okay. Okay. So, Alex. Hey, what's up? You, 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 you brought something. You, you brought a clip. Yeah, I, uh, my thing is w is really short, and actually, it kind of highlights just the difference between the office and our show. I think because the creators of our show, Greg Daniels and Mike Schur, also worked on the office and basically ran that show for a long time. And I think consciously, while they were making our show and running it, they kind of shied away from a lot of the stuff that they did on the office. Basically, Michael, the center central character of that show, is really, really ignorant, and he's saying racially insensitive things all the time. The main character of our show is played by Amy Poehler and her name is Leslie Nope and she's kind of the opposite of Michael Scott because she's super hyper competent. She works really hard and everyone kind of loves her. So there's way less sort of cringy, awkward comedy in our show and so when I was thinking about, hey, is there like racial comedy? It's just, no, The Office has done that a million times and they've done it really well. So we basically have not done as much of it. So what I did is I brought a clip uh, that stars Aziz Ansari and also Amy. Um, and I think it's interesting because Aziz's character on the show um, basically, and this is something Aziz has told me, basically he tries to play characters who could be played by any race. Um, he tries to, he doesn't, like he gets offers roles as like cab drivers in movies and he turns them down. And he, you know, that's kind of his career aspiration is to be a guy like, I don't want to be a funny Indian comic, I want to be a funny comic, I want to be a funny actor. And so the, basically the one thing, the one racial thing on our show has been that his name, his character's name on the show was he was born uh, Darwish Ismail Ghani, but then changed his name to Tom Haverford because it's the whitest name possible, <laughs> and and like basically that he says that in the pilot he's like I gotta g I gotta get ahead in politics I can't be named Darwish Ismail Ghani, um, but uh, so that's basically it and we really haven't touched on it that much so this is just a comedy clip it's not really racially uh, racially motivated or anything like that I don't know what you brought Aisha that is it if it's if it has any uh, issues in it or anything we'll get to that <laughs> oh. Okay, well, prepare to watch like a 20 second clip then, because <laughs> it's really short. Yeah, let's do it both. We can do them both, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, 
Do you want me you, to yes. introduce mine? Yes, yeah, set up, set up um, yours also. Well, I chose, I chose a clip that I, it ha has almost the whole cast. We have a pretty diverse cast on our right. show, um, and that makes a, diver a diverse work group, basically. And uh, this clip has the whole Parks and Recreation Department, so not Rashida Jones, she's not there, but basically everyone else in the cast is there. And it's a scene where they're, basically everyone is very respectful of each other, um, except to the one guy who is a middle-aged white guy, which is kind of the opposite of how <laughs> maybe it would normally go. Um, but he's basically the office punching bag. And in this episode, they he has been mugged recently, and so they're trying to be nice to him for once. But he's not making it easy. Yeah, and just to set up mine, if we do mine first, uh, the premise is from an episode called Soulmates, and the idea is that Amy Poehler's character, Leslie, uh, goes on an internet dating service and she puts in all her information and she gets set up with Aziz's character. And she's like, oh my god, this is terrible. He's a huge douchebag. And so she's, she doesn't told him yet and she's trying to investigate by asking him out on a lunch date. And uh, it, this clip is just him coming up with names for food. So that's all this is. <laughs> Alan, you said on your show you, you pretty much, you know, they avoid anything racial or... Uh, we don't really do a lot of like political or or racial humor either of those weirdly i mean it's uh, we allude to current events but we try not to say that the characters are you know liberal or conservative it's it's kind of a, an interesting situation we're we're creating a show to just um I don't know. I, we're, we're, we're trying to create situations that are funny and we're not making a political show in any way. I think the creators have been careful to do that. Uh, okay. So it's, 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 no one ever pushes for it or anything? Or are jokes ever, I should say, discarded be because of it? No, it's not that we're afraid to offend people. It's just that that's not the nature of the show. You know, it's not South Park. It's not, you know, it's not a show that's taking All political stands like that. are pretty smart, caring people, so they wouldn't necessarily make the same mistakes that Michael Scott would make just because they're not coming from that. They've worked together for a while. They respect each other. It's just not going to be the same dynamic. Uh, okay. Um, unlike um, Community, where <laughs> where de dehumanization <laughs> abounds. <laughs> where where uh, it seems to be to go in the other direction. Where it when it comes to uh, I guess race, color, gender, or anything that's that's taboo, that mm -hmm. you use comedy to pretty much attack all those issues. Yeah, I I, I, I guess um, I, I it uh, it's mainly like. Pierce is the baby boomer, like I said, so that comes with all kinds of foot and mouth sort of attempts to not be racist, resulting in being racist. Then you have Britta, who's like sort of the defiant uh, uh, early 30s, late 20s white girl who also wants to save the world, wants to be responsible for it, is fighting against her own selfishness, so she's very often inadvertently... Uh, 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 the voice of, of, of the oppressor on accident. You have the, the younger characters, Troy, Annie, and Abed, they're, they exist in this sort of like what is being called by academics as this post-racial world, which some would scoff at, like, like, like we can never have that. But, but like they're, they're bored with race, you know? Like this is how I perceive people in their early 20s. Like it's hack now uh, to them. They, they, they're kind they're over it, uh, and 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 so they exist in that world. But Britta and Jeff just sort of like he'll say anything to to, to get what he needs, and he's aware that that uh, politics and race and gender are all hot buttons that you can push to get anybody to think anything you want, and that's how he gets by. Um, so that, I don't. That's that's how I think about the world. I'm obsessed with race. I'm obsessed with gender. I'm obsessed with the things that divide us. I I, I can't stop thinking about them. If I try, I'll 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 make an ass of myself even. More more so than I than I do when I'm not trying. So so I, I embrace it, and, and that's what the show's about. It's called Community because it's about like it examines dynamics between people. And in this country, uh, my perception is that a lot of those dynamics still are sort of obsessed with very surfacey things that are artificial constructs, but that our obsession with them makes makes them real. <coughs> I think, Cutting you off. I, I, yeah, my my <laughs> microphone is. Uh, knows what I should know, which is that I should shut up. <laughs>